everybody. It's your boy, Randy Stress. Welcome to the Stress-Free Zone, the show that lets you meet your favorite athletes and celebrities and other people from time to time on a more personal level. We try to keep everything as chill as we possibly can. I don't go into stats and things like that. But <laughs> right now, we have a former Wolfpack star. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hall of Famer. <laughs> Um, broke a record with and so um, we gonna bring you Chastity Melvin. Chastity Melvin, I'm sorry, I'm going from this point on. Stay, Coach. Coach, welcome to the show. Uh, thanks for having me, Randy. I'm excited to be a part of the stress pre zone. <laughs> Man, I'd, I'd say it all the time. People are like, why do they call you Randy Stress? Because I'm chill. Like seriously, that's why they say it. Because I'm chill. I I don't know what else to say. Um, I was really excited to talk to you, not just because you worked your behind off to become a coach, but uh, you truly love the sport and you play for my team. I'm from Chicago. I don't know if you know that. Oh, really? Okay. Yes, yes. yes. you play okay. for the sky. And uh, I remember that. So it's one of those things when, when I get to talk to someone that touched something personal with me, I'm like, hey, all right, you know, you, you know my city. So uh, <laughs> I'm extra happy to welcome you to the show. Um, I'm 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 really excited because uh, I know a lot of guy shows they don't really talk to female coaches that much, but I'm one of those people who I want to talk to anybody who can work their behind off and get to that spot because it's not like they just go hey you want to be the coach here you go you 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 earn that spot I don't care what you're playing you earn it and congratulations to you for earning that. Thank um, you. So I'm gonna get into. What I do on the show, my first question, I love to do this, and it is uh, to ask, what do you want people to know about you? Wow. What do I want people <laughs> to know about me? Uh, all the good stuff. Only the good stuff. <laughs> no, no. Um, I, I, I just, what I guess I would love for people to know about me is that I am from humble beginnings, and I was all about putting affirmations and claiming stuff and putting stuff in the universe just basically stuff I learned from my faith. My dad's a minister. So I would like to say I took my blueprint from life coaching from the Bible, like, you know, write the vision, make it plain. Um, nothing's impossible with God. So, I mean, I have a very strong faith. So I would definitely love for people to know that about me and just know that I am all about chasing dreams and just trying to reach them. Like, I feel like if you aren't dreaming, you aren't living. So... <laughs> No, I get that. I live my life by that. I'm always putting things out in the universe. It's funny. I'm a writer, but my penmanship is terrible. So I don't write down my dreams like most people do. I just continuously say it to the universe. I just yeah. continuously, hey, 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 I know you can't read what I wrote. Let me go ahead and say this to you. So yeah. that, that's my way of doing it. I, yeah. um, I love the fact that uh, not only did you play basketball against the women, but you used to play basketball against the guys. And I hear you are not intimidated by the fellas at all on the court. No, no, I'm not. And, you know, I have a lot of respect for the guys, for most guys, um, because they had a lot of respect for me as a female as far as getting out on the court. Obviously, they made me the player that I am. I, I definitely wouldn't have been able to have longevity in the professional career if I didn't play with guys and I didn't have great guys that respected, like, my craft and the fact that I wanted to be a great basketball player. Um, I, I, I did run, in, run into a few of the guys were, that were a little misogynist and, you know, they're, you know, you face those sexist remarks. But for the most part, uh, especially down south from where I'm from, guys just once I could play, it was just, are you on my team? We're going to win. <laughs> how do you keep yourself focused uh, or how did you keep yourself focused when it comes to um, honing your skills as far as dribbling, as far as uh, shooting? Because that's that's incredible to me <laughs> first and foremost you just have a you have to have a passion for it and I think you know I talked to a parent the other day and they were just saying you know my daughter's talking to me about like do I want to work out or like I'm, I'm not gonna make my kids work out if they're passionate about something they want to do it then they got they got to ask me I mean that's with anything so first and foremost you got to be passionate about it because there's so many hours you have to put in that you got to kind of like what you're doing. It's not going to be something like, I don't really like that. And that goes for basketball players, art, I mean, artists, rappers. Like, you want to be a rapper, but do you want to stay in the studio for 16, 20 hours? 
It's a lot true. of people don't want to do that, but then they want a great song. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I want money, but... <laughs> yeah, and it's just like these kids, like, I want to be a great basketball player, but you work them out for, you start working them out in 30 minutes, they're ready to be done. It's like, you know, it's not microwavable. So, yeah, you got to be passionate. And I just enjoyed the game so much. And for me, I just wanted to be the best. It was just that competitive nature of playing against people and then somebody might have beat me one game and then it's like, oh, I got to get better at this. Or they did that, I want to be able to do it. So it was just having a more competitive, more competitive nature than the next person. Okay, yeah, yeah, I, I, I get that and I see that and I, I love that. It seems that does cross over because uh, anything you want to do in life, you really got to, you really got to put your all into it. I, I wanted to be a writer and I didn't put my all in in the beginning and I got talked about it. People said, you won't be a good writer. And I sat back, realized what I needed to do. And now I'm a good writer. Now I have people looking at my work. So I'm like, I get that same, it's that same mindset, no matter what you're doing in life, if you want to do it, even cooking, you, you have to put your heart into it. I love yeah. to cook. I put my heart into everything and I get mad if you don't eat my food hot. <laughs> Great, because I don't like not eating food hot either way, so I get it. No, I, I mean, yeah, that's what a lot of people don't. I mean, people talk to me all the time, and I'm always, you know, I have, I'm, I'm smiling a lot, and people just think, like, everything is easy, and it's just, no, it's, you got to be passionate. You got to you gotta put in the work. Like, no one is going to just give you anything. So I, I want to ask this before I go into my other question. Um, at what point in life did you know basketball was for you? I was 11 years old. Oh, wow. I picked up a basketball. My Actually, my fourth grade teacher asked me to play. And we played the fifth graders. I'll never forget. We lost by one point. I had never played before that because down south, girls didn't play basketball. Right. You know? <laughs> no, I had the old school grandmothers. So um, I wasn't playing basketball. And so once I got out there, it was, I was tall. But I was naturally gifted. And when I made that first basket, it was just love at first sight. It was just, I, I came home and immediately told my mom I figured out what I want to do with my life. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's a beautiful story right there. Yeah, it's a great story. Wrote a wait, book. wait, wait, wait. What did your mom say, though? I mean, I don't want to stereotype the black mother, but she was like, <laughs> there aren't professional women basketball teams, like, in the States, so you got to figure out something else. And I said, Mom, I don't worry. There will be when I grow up. And so huh, You called that one. I called I it. Mean, and I tell her that story all the time. <laughs> and and like, it's good, though. Yeah, I say, Ma, not only did I play in one professional basketball league for women, but two. So I always tell her that. But yeah, I was like a naive country girl. Yeah, that had big dreams. That's where my parents came in, though. Like, my dad and my mother, you know, we still had a faith. So my, I had my undeniable faith in God. Like, you know, God's going to give you the desires of your heart. I learned that very early. I mean, so that, you know, along with my faith and my, you know, being a naive country girl, you know, it's just hard for any. And I surrounded myself with people that were crazy enough to believe in it. Or if they didn't, they still respected the fact of this is this is chastity. Like everyone will tell you, chastity always talked about being a basketball player. So whether they thought I was crazy or not, it still was just like that's what she wants to do, you know. So people have kind of lived vicariously through my, you know, me following my dreams, and and that's been a kind of an inspiration for other people. And so, you know, too much is given, much is expected. But yeah, um, I think my faith pretty much held me over like the negative, you know, beliefs or the non-support. It's just like if I got God, I'm okay. <laughs> okay, okay, that's a good thing. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm jump into my next question because I love the I love the different responses I get. So this question is: If you could talk to anyone, famous or not, who would it be? Um, wow. Anyone famous or not famous? Um, I, if I could speak to anyone, I would definitely love to have a conversation with Martin Luther King. Um, if I could speak to anyone, like, you know, just go have a, a conversation with. And I guess someone that is alive now, I would love to have a conversation with Oprah Winfrey. Okay, well, well look, I, I need to know this. What would you ask Miss Winfrey? What would I ask her? Yeah, I want to know. <laughs> I mean, I just, I've heard and just, I know someone that wrote the story on, I heard that she had a similar story, at, like, as opposed to me. Like, a lot of people don't know this about me, but I grew up in the country, you know, like Oprah did. And, you know, she said she used to clean homes where her grandma, she would tell her, like, I'm, ne I'm not going to be doing this when I get older. And so I used to crop tobacco with my grandmother. So we were out in the fields. And so I used to tell my grandmother all the time, like, I'm not, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to play basketball. And so I, I, I and just... 
I mean, obviously she's a billionaire now and I'm not close to that, but just the, <laughs> her, her journey as far as being in uncomfortable situations, but holding on to the fact as an African-American woman that she didn't let anything stop her from that or just the certain people she longed along the way that helped her along her journey that believed in her. And I kind of had to have that story coming from such a small rural area. There were some great, you know, not just African-Americans, but white people that kind of stepped in and kind of helped me along the way that kind of got me out of my small town. And I was afforded a lot of opportunities that helped me, you know, become the person I am. So I would just love to talk to her about her story, her journey. I get that. That that would be a good person to talk to. And uh, just so you know, it doesn't matter a billionaire or not. It, you guys both had phenomenal journeys and you both got to exactly where you want to be. I think that's an amazing thing. I also love the fact that you said it was uh, more than just uh, black people that helped you get out of the community. Because right now we're in this world where we think everything is so divided. We don't realize um, there are some ignorant people on both sides, uh, all sides, really. And it it does take people to help you get to where you need to be. It's not about one over the other. It's just good people working together brings about the best results. And right. I, I love the fact that you said that. That's that's to me that seems to be really important now because we've gotten so divided and we don't we don't talk to each other anymore. So thank you for saying that. The next question, let's see how this goes. This is a simple one. Um, what makes you smile in real life, in your private life? Uh, right now, just my nieces and nephews. I mean, I love them dearly. I have seven. So we, we just, um, my sister just had the baby girl, Sarah Bear. Sarah's eight months. So they're just, they're my wives right now. So I, I tell my sisters and brothers, thank you for having the kids and I treat them like they're mine. But I, I love them and leave them. I love them and give them back. <laughs> but no, they make me smile and they're, they're amazing. And um, so they're a big reason why, you know, you can never get comfortable because I want to be able to tell them they can do like so many different things. So how, how old is the oldest kid? The oldest is um, 18 and she just oh. got a full ride to New York University. So um, right. I believe that's such a blessing. Like I'm making fun of her. She FaceTimes me and I'm like, you're in New York City with this great view. And because of quarantine, they don't have roommates. So she has her own room for first year, downtown New York, great view. And She's I living live in New York, so I get it. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, do you know how blessed you are? Like, you know, growing up, that's what we couldn't imagine it. Like, growing up, we were just like, if I can just get to New York City. You know, now my niece is living there uh, on a scholarship, so it's just great. So, because uh, you know that kids sometimes don't listen to great advice because they think we're just telling them what to do instead of uh, telling them from our experiences. So... Yeah. Uh, what would you want to tell them if you could tell them anything to help them get to what they're trying to do? Uh, just never lose their confidence, um, which is hard. I think sometimes it's just not even the naysayers. When, it's when people are like, don't value your goals or dreams or support you. The heart, the second hardest thing is just keeping that confidence in yourself and believing, you know, those thoughts and those dreams that keep you up at night, believing like you have that talent or you you have those desires and things that you, gifts that you have, just continue to believe in it, even if you don't have the platform. You know, for me, like, I can see myself doing so many things, although that platform is not readily available, but I still can see it and I still maintain that confidence in myself. So I think that's what I tell my, I would tell my nieces and nephews or young kids to always believe in yourself. And then just, um, you know, get out on your own way. It's, it, it's not, Sometimes they get so caught up in like where they want to be that they're not in the present moment and realizing like, okay, this setback, what do I learn from it and get through it? You always have to go through something to get what you want. If that was the case, everyone would achieve their goals and dreams. <laughs> this, this, this is definitely true. And I, I know for me, I got in my own way plenty of times before I figured it out. My like most people are like, yeah, my goal was, and me, I was like, well, I'm here and there, there, and there, there. I got back here, but I did a lot of this because I got into my, I got my own way. I got in my own head. I started not believing in myself, and it's easy for that to happen. You know, you start thinking like, well, man, I'm still trying to get this goal, but I need a job, or I'm still trying to do this, and you don't realize. And um, I tell the young people that I talk to, like, you can get the job, but never let that dream go. Don't don't let people 
ever put an age limit on it. Don't let anybody put a time limit on it because I tell people all the time, Morgan Freeman didn't get his first big acting break until 47. So that, sh- and look at him now. I mean, look at him now. At 47, he got his first real acting gig and he blew up from there. So I tell, I tell young people that I meet, like, don't, don't let people put an expiration date on your dream. Yeah. I mean, if, if you're trying to be a rapper, you probably need to, you know, because <laughs> you can't be talking about the club and you're like 50. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but other than that. I still, don't like, I still don't like that either. I'm actually thinking about coming out with my own gospel rap album, but, and I'll do it. And it's just, I think with that, you know, Randy, it's, it's not about so much age. Like I tell people, I'm like, when you want to do something, know that mm-hmm. it's like in a desire of your own personal heart. You know, like I wrote my book and people were just like, oh, did you make a lot of money off of that book? You know, some people want to write a book and they're thinking, I want to make a lot of money. Or some people want to come out with a rap album or a song. They want to make a lot of money. I'm like, when you do stuff, you got to be passionate about it. There's something that like is keeping you up at night or you get these ideas and you want to do it. You should never look at other people's lifestyle and be like, I want that. And that's why I want to do it. And so that's why I encourage all my friends, no matter what their age, I mean, if you want to do a rap album, but why do you want to do it? Is it like, because right. you want to be famous and you want what comes with it? Or is it something that you feel like God's placed on your heart and you have a desire to do it? So so there's a couple of things there that I really, I loved everything you said, but I love the fact that you can still rap at 50. You just have to know how to, when I said that, I meant to say you have to know how to adjust your rap to where you oh, yeah. are now. Yeah, just and, people. And, yeah. Go Most ahead. people still try to rap like a 20 year old. And you're like, mm, dude, you need to get it up there. <laughs> the next, the, but one thing you brought up and I really want to know more about this is you talked about your book. So uh, I need to hear about the book. Uh, Tell the me book, about it. The book is, I will say, you know, personally, I had like a little bit of depression that every athlete faces when they're forced to give up their career or they retire, you know, something they love all their life. Um, so for me, I say my vice is just putting my thoughts down. You know, I didn't turn and, you know, I wanted and I, I kind of reconnected with how my foundation, my faith, because I was really struggling. So it just took my whole personal relationship with God to an entirely different level. And I just felt like God was placing on my heart to share. Like I kind of just went back over my career and I kind of looked at it as like 40 days and 40 nights, <laughs> you know, like I thought it was forever, right. and it was, you know, flew by. So I just I actually wrote it on devotional platforms, so I, I just share a personal story. It might have happened on the court or off the court, and then I give a life, you know, self-help tip, and I end it with the quote and a prayer. So there are 40 of them, and they're short snippets of my life story, so people are like, I want to know more. I'm like, I didn't write that book. So I kind of, it's just an introduction just to kind of, you know, share p- with people certain stories, and like, this is how it's happened. You know. The book's out and everything, right? Yeah, it's on Amazon. It's available on Amazon. It's called At the End of the Day. And um, yeah, I think it will, I tell people it will inspire you. <laughs> inspire you. I love that. Yeah. I love that. So, I had to ask because you didn't say the name. So I was like, what's the name of the book? Now, what's the name of the book again? Let's make sure we got it out there. It's called At the End of the Day. I know that's cliche, but At the End of the Day. And every quote starts with At the End of the Day. And I kind of give like a quote of something that helped me, you know, keep pursuing my goals and dreams. So. I can I can see how you would say it's cliche, but I I like to think it's um, instead of cliche, I like to think of it as simple because a lot of times it's amazing how the simplest statement can take you into the deepest thought and yeah. bring about the most emotion. So I'm going to check your book out because that actually might be something that I need to listen to because or read because that's that's that simple thing is the thing where you're just like wow I just, wow and yeah. Your and that's, is that's why I wrote, I wrote it. Like I, I am not a writer. I am a talker. Um, but, but I wrote it very simple. It's a very simple read, but it's, it's something like when I used to travel overseas, I always carried a devotional with me because I, I couldn't get to church and I missed that fellowship. So devotional was something easy I could pick up. And like you said, just get something simple that was just kind of inspired you to go through the day. So each chapter is just like, you read it as short, it's quick, but you get, at the end of the day, you get that quote that's like, ah, yeah. You know, like that's- A little, like that's, a little that's snack like, for your soul. Yeah, like I just kind of wanted people to get that, like if they're struggling, they might read a devotional, it's like, oh, okay. Like, and they get something from it. So it's not anything, I mean, it's, I believe it's a great book. I do think it will help people, but it's not something deep where somebody's like, 
you know, I, you know, it's just something they can pick up with ease and get something out of it. Okay. So I know that you, uh, you're a spiritual person. So uh, the question I'm going to ask is going to be a little different. It's, it's going to be about music. So who is your go-to artist or what is your go-to genre of music with whichever one you want to pick when you get stressed out and you just need to, woof. Oh, I mean, obviously gospel music. Um, and obviously I grew up in a church, so all old school. It depends on what I'm going through, what which type of gospel I use. Um, but throughout my career, I, I will say, I was just telling the person this, I was so happy with Kirk Franklin because he, he changed the dynamics of gospel music. And, um, you know, for me, that was something that was the first time I could really play gospel music in the locker room. And I, uh, I remember my teammates saying, Chaz, you can play Kirk, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. You can play Kirk. So that kind of saved me because that gave me, gospel music always gave me a sense of peace before I played games. And I would listen to it up until it get into the locker room. So when Kirk came out, I got to blast Kirk. But I mean, right now there, um, I love KCJ. Um, I love her music. Um, obviously I love Lecrae with his gospel rap and a few others, but people, and I love the non-traditional gospel rap. So I'm really into that, but our, I am strictly 90s. Old school R and B all day every day. There you um, go. Yeah, no one talks about Mary J. Blige, you know. So and uh, <laughs> so you know that's me, but I am definitely old school all the way. I, and and uh, yeah, I love all of that. I'm like uh, I'm not a church guy. I'm a spiritual guy, and I don't get into a lot of gospel. KRS One actually got me into gospel rap. Uh, he did a great album, but I do my old gospel favorite and it still puts a tear in my eye is when i hear tomorrow by the winings that song yeah. still to this day if i listen to it i just get that and all of a sudden it's just like <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean i love i love bb and cc i remember playing it people were like is this christian music and i'm like yeah now nah. but um my i was raised on the winings so every time i listen to the winings you know tomorrow and it brings me back to a very familiar and very safe place yeah. So I tell my dad that all the time. My dad was like, my, the wine has got me through, you know, with uh, five kids and my wife. And he's a minister too. But yeah, I love the wine. And so I actually put, posted them on Instagram during Black History Month because they were so instrumental in our family's lives as far as, I mean, they were not traditional too. And when BB and CC came out with their albums, people were looking cockeyed. But at the same right. time, you know, um, yeah, I love the wine so much. Yeah, I'm a huge, I'm a huge fan of the wine is they, yeah, my friends used to laugh because I grew up around a lot of church people. I have a cousin who's a pastor. I have friends who are pastors and they all laugh because they're like, I am amazed at how much you will shut up when, when the wine has come on, but you'll talk smack about everything else. And I'm like, Hey, what well, touch you touch you. That's all there is to it. The yeah. message got through from the wine. And so that's why I stick with, you know, it's whoever can get me that message I need. <laughs> yeah, it is all about the, the message and delivery. Right. So uh, before I go back to the kids, uh, what's your next move? Randy, I always have a next move. I guess. Uh, okay. Um, so right now I'm, I really want to focus on um, starting another podcast, a new podcast. And I want to call it the God's Child Podcast. Um, because I have a lot of people say they're spiritual, they don't go to church. Um, the church was my foundation, and I, I love the church and the idea of it. I think people are hard on the church. So um, through my God's Child pa podcast, I want to talk about my faith and the challenges that come along with it being in a traditional Christian family and um, the cult more cultural Christians and have uh, artists, celebrities, or not even artists or celebrities, but different people who who are challenged with their Christian faith and how they cross over. So I want to share that. So I want to kind of get in the nitty gritty of like how it's really about a spiritual relationship with God and just the challenges and how things were so taboo. Like I think Lecrae was talking about how he was so hurt by the church. I think a lot of Christians that do something different, it's not traditional. Um, obviously for me, like a lot of experiences I had, I had people tell me I was going to hell and like a lot of different things that kind of hurt you where you, you you're hurt by the church yeah. but so i want to talk about those stories and just kind of bring people back not to just church but just understanding the overall you know jesus's love jesus ideals and like how important my foundation and how important even though there were some issues with the church you know it was a great foundation for me and i always felt covered and i do feel it was a sort of blessing to 
have that background um, where I am in my life and how I've dealt with different situations. So I want to start the God's Child podcast and my apparel line through that. Uh, your apparel line? Well, we're going to jump yeah. to the apparel line in just a second, but I just wanted to say, I think that uh, podcast would be great because there are people like me out here who grew up in the church and then the church kind of, and you, like, I never, I don't hate the church. I just prefer to talk to people away from it. And, and your podcast might be one of those things to kind of bring a healing to people who they, they, they don't want to go far, but they're still kind of scared to go back into that door. And uh, yeah. so, so that would be, that would be a great thing. Uh, and I, I would look out for that. Definitely. You might have me on there talking about, come on in the room. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I want to have people with all walks of life because I meet a, I meet a lot of people and they're like, you know, I still profess my faith. It's always something I talk about. Um, and, you know, I mean, even like when people get on the church, sometimes I try not to get in the comments, but I just say like, look, you know, we support the NFL. We support different organizations. And it's truly about leadership. I mean, you look at our country. I mean, People want to blame, like they get so much, they fall in love with the person delivering the message and what the organization and people working in the organization. These people are human. I mean, right. just because you're a Christian, you don't lose being a human. Right. <laughs> you're still that person with all these issues. And I'm like, we can support so much stuff and not bash it, but the church is supposed to be perfect, even though the person, the minister is human and he's imperfect. Right. And so and, I, and I, yeah. No, I, yeah, so I just want to, like you said, I I know there are a lot of people hurt from church, and I know there are a lot of things that there could be a transformation for it, but there was also, that was a great place for Black people as far as fellowship and something we had of our own, and now right. a lot, a huge gap of young people don't get to experience that, and I think that has to do a lot with mental health and kids struggling nowadays. Oh, so. yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, it's it's definitely something needed. It's definitely a, a good healing, but I don't want to, it's not that I want to cut this subject. I only have a few minutes left. So I want to get to your clothing line. Yeah. So the God's child would kind of come from the podcast, but it's something I wanted to do since 2007. Um, um, but it's just kind of like to the meaning behind the brand would to give people hope and just something they can rock and make something about God. Cool. Kind of similar to God is dope. But um, I just have different, you know, ideas for it and just something to share my faith and something I could rock for myself. Um, okay. And so that's that's all it's about. So we'll see if I get it out there. That's something I have to have courage with, but I'm praying and hopefully I can, you know, it's not basketball. I'm very confident in basketball. So this other stuff, I'm confident in it, but it's kind of scary because it's like, what? Chas is talking about this, like really putting it out there. <laughs> The, the fact that you're scared about it is is amazing because anytime you're fearful of something, it's because you really believe in it and you really want the best for it. For yeah. It. So it, it's it's really good that uh, that you said that because if you come in cocky, I'm kind of like, eh. but if you come in with a little, then I'm like, oh, okay, okay, hold on. This person coming with something real. Yeah. And my passion behind it and why I want it is because I see so many people, people are looking at me and it's like, I'm not always happy. Things are hard. I mean, I, I face life like everyone else, but my faith has got me through a lot. And I, I feel like a lot of people don't understand that because of the backlash from church and Christians and judgment and all that. And if you can get past that, you know, having a strong faith alone. And I mean, like, and talk about counseling and how people are put counseling as taboo. If you're a Christian, like I've been to counseling, like I want to share that stuff with people to say like, hey, this is great. But that foundation, no one can take that from me. And I, I know my faith has kept me strong through a lot of times where I was depressed or times where I got really low and you just have no hope. So, right. Well, I, I'm wishing you the best on everything that you're trying to do. Uh, I'm looking forward to that cop, that podcast. It <laughs> definitely sounds like something I would be um, interested in hearing. And uh, I, I'm hoping the clothing line goes the way you want. And when you put that uh, gospel rap album out, <laughs> I'm going to be looking for that, too. So I, I definitely want to hear that. I really, really appreciate you having having you on my show right now. It was it was a great conversation. I enjoyed everything. I enjoyed calling you coach because it's fun <laughs> to say. <laughs> thank great. you so much, coach. I appreciate it. To um, everyone out there, thank you again for coming out to the Stress Free Zone. Enjoy yourself. Love one another. Love yourself more than anyone else. And remember, stay stress free. You guys have a blessed day.